Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video. I hope that you've been having a good uh, Christmas. If you're celebrating Christmas, if you're not, and, you know, whatever holiday you may be celebrating, I hope it's been a good one. If you're not celebrating anything at all, I hope you're just chilling as well. So um, I hope everyone's in good spirits and whatnot. Uh, I, I kind of just wanted to make this video just discussing briefly my experiences with the Race to World fi First. Obviously, that's why I took a little bit of a break from making some YouTube videos and from streaming as well, uh, because I was hosting for pieces. And I kind of just wanted to note down a little bit of my experience of that, but then also delve into what I think could definitely improve uh, the scene with the Race to World First, because it's been an area of, um, of controversy with Limit taking the win, but we will get into that in a moment. So... Uh, first of all, the experience was amazing. Um, I, I have been looking forward to it now uh, for like the last two months. And then finally being able to get into it and, and be a part of it was amazing. I wasn't sure how it was going to go because I've never, ever hosted anything before. So for me, that was really um, that was really interesting. Uh, going into the hosting role instead of the casting. I didn't know if I was going to be good enough. I didn't know if I was going to do a good enough job. And uh, I don't know, pieces believed in me. Or I guess they had no other options. One of the two. I don't know. I don't know which one it is, but I'm not going to overanalyze that. And uh, yeah, it was just a blast. It was so much fun. Uh, the early mornings were killer. The late nights were killer. But it was so cool tracking the progress of pieces and listening in on the comms. Even I'd go to bed. I'd have a little nap in the afternoon before the, the evening session. And I'd have my headphones on. I'd be napping and I'd be listening in on the players. And I feel like I've definitely bonded and grown with the team, even from like an external POV because obviously they didn't interact with me. It was that one way interaction where I was just hearing them and it was just great seeing the positivity from the team. And yeah, they had their moments, but it was amazing to be a part of. And um, yeah, all the casters that I was with were great. Like it was also like, like Arudra and Waith and Drone, like these super smart analytical guys and being able to do like the Gold interview with uh, Gold and Rich Campbell doing that interview, which was insane. Um, and uh, yeah, just some really cool experiences, getting to see some new faces like just Russ and Hello Q and getting to have them involved was, was really awesome. Cause you know, um, I actually tried to get just Russ involved and be like, yo, like, you know, I'll recommend you. I'll try and get you, get, get you involved. And, and uh, because I know that he'd be great for it. And he was, and it's fantastic that he did such a great job and it was Q's first time. And, and yeah, just everyone did a great job. And um, yeah, just thank you to the whole team. Cause I think it was an awesome experience to be a part of. And I can't wait for the next race. Like I'm really hoping the next one's in the studio because I definitely like, I, I mean, dude, I'm, I'm in sweats right now. I mean, I'm in sweatpants, you know? So I just, I want to be in a studio. I want to be professional. I want to be. I want to be there with people in person and enjoy that experience. But that was basically my experience with it, and it was a, a whole lot of fun. Um, and yeah, I don't know. It was just a great, a great thing to be a part of. And thank you to Pieces for that. But uh, moving forward, then into in, into the actual race and the results. So Limit One. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Limit. W were the first to kill side in Athreus. It was a very, very close race between them and Echo that ultimately ended in Limit taking the win, and they were both wiping at sub-5% on that boss, right? And I think it's shown just how good both teams are, um, that both teams were able to put a whole boss in between them and the rest of the competition. Like, it's not even like there were 10 teams on side in Athreus, and these two guys managed to just take it first. It's like... Nobody to this day, it's the 27th of December. Nobody else has killed Stone Legion yet, like multiple days after this event is over. And Limit and Echo both re cleared, they both killed this twice. And then there's no other guild in the world that can even kill it once. So I think it's just showing a testament to how good these teams are that they're able to fight this boss and and then go on to side in Athreus, which I think ultimately is not going to pose as much of a threat to a lot of these guilds as Stone Legion Generals has. But there was a lot of controversy because obviously NA start first, right? NA start, they have a 16-hour advantage, which is in air quotes because technically it depends on how long maintenance is and whatnot. And a lot of people look at Limit as having this advantage and then it swings the other way and they go, oh, well, now Echo has an advantage because they've been able to watch Limit progress for the first X amount of hours. And they've, like, when we woke up on Wednesday and it was ready for EU to go live, Limit had already killed seven bosses. So 
you can already see all of their VODs. You can see all their strats. You can see which bosses are bugged, which ones don't work, which ones you're going to want a certain comp on. And like, I don't know, you could you could just pull so much information. You can you can get like more data for your weak auras with timings and things like that. And knowing when they're popping healing cooldowns, when and where and and how their DPS are functioning. And if you play, say you play a hunter, you can go watch one of their hunters and see what they did and exactly how they played the fight and what talents and everything. And it's just the whole fight like you don't have to do any ex experimentation really you can just see how they've experimented and then just go oh well let's just do that we know it works and there's a big difference when you look at a boss when you know it's killable and it's been killed compared to when it you know it's 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 not been um it, it's never been killed before and you're all trying to struggle through it together and um yeah, so there's this there's this thing of the the advantage between EU and NA swinging back and forth, swinging back and forth, and then there's the Asian region, which starts on Thursday, two days later, and they just have a terrible time because they actually play on US servers, on NA servers for the first two days to practice, and then when the gates open on Thursday, then the Asian teams, then they can actually start their race, and they're never gonna win a world first because uh, unless it was like a two, three, four week experience, because they're two days behind like you can't catch that uh even if you you have some incredible players which we know that they do and it's just caused a lot of controversy in the community there's been a lot of people coming in i mean a lot of people came into the pieces stream when echo turned off their stream because echo said well we don't want to give the advantage to limits so they turned off their stream and they stopped streaming we had a lot of people come into our chat on the pieces side of things and just being toxic and everything and it just wasn't a fun experience to be a part of um and just getting that level of like toxicity and negativity was just kind of disgusting really and um i just think there are a few options on how to fix this right a lot of people call for a global release and a lot of people say oh well a global release would be terrible because the top players like na would start at like 7 a.m eu would start in the afternoon asia would start at, at like midnight or whatever like that's not fair because but like players don't care they will wake up at any time like i know for the side of pieces we have three na players they're waking up at four or five a.m to start raiding with us they don't care they will do it because that's what it takes fixing a sleep schedule is fine the, with degenerate gamers anyway the issue is for for actual people outside of the race that then like if your guild is a two day a week guild and you're let's say world top 50 and you're two day a week guild and you raid on a wednesday and a monday and on the wednesday the raid comes out and you're well okay let's say let's say let's say you raid on on a, on a tuesday ever right because the raid comes out on a tuesday let's say it comes out on na time let's say you raid tuesday and sunday right and the raid comes out on Tuesday, you're expecting to log in and start playing, but oh, there's extended maintenance, you've just lost your raid night. And now you're not going to raid until Sunday, which means that you've just lost like half your week or the majority of your week now to raid on. And now you've just lost tons of world rankings and you're now not top 50, you're now probably top 200 because the raid has released at a time that was awkward to you or something like that, right? And I think that there are instances where this could occur. And I think for the average player where like, if you're on EU and you're wake, you're like you're ready to come home from work and raid, and then just like the first day of release, you just can't raid. That's a real bummer. So I think for actual humans, um, you know, outside of the, the, the race, I think that is an issue. And I don't think that that's the best thing necessarily uh or at least you know people would have to move their raid times as a result of that now another suggestion has been tournament realms and i think tournament realms we've seen now make that suggestion i mean i made that suggestion or well i didn't make that suggestion but we made that suggestion on the pieces channel i think it was waith who said it and uh it's it's a it's a good point right it's a good point tournament realms would be great you would transfer over your character a couple days before the release um, of the of the raid you wouldn't be able to it wouldn't be like a normal tournament realm like you get with the awc and, and mdi and, and mythic plus tournaments where you have like gear vendors and trinkets and like parts and everything like you just have everything in chance like everything you'd probably have to do some kind of consumable vendors things like flasks and feasts and stuff because that stuff in the grand scheme doesn't matter but you wouldn't just have a gear vendor you would still have to go and farm all that gear and all that kind of stuff that would have a few impacts because it would mean that you wouldn't have your community there to support you to come and do split runs. You wouldn't be able to buy a bunch of BOEs, which is actually really cool. I think this makes the race way more fair because 
teams with a massive bankroll don't just automatically get this big advantage for just having more money. So I think that's a really a really good idea of this tournament realms. A lot of people are against the idea of tournament realms, and I can understand why. There are reasons like now, for example, made in his um in his twit longer, um, which is a great twit longer to see this time around, by the way, as opposed to the twit longers we've had in the past. Uh, now now made the statement of well any gear that you get during this would just be wasted and once the tournament was over you'd have to go back onto normal realms and then you'd have to like reprogress your character which i mean for these guys they don't care like they'll do it right but it's not a great feeling to have to do that you want to progress with your character and uh, and feel the satisfaction of of having progged it um I think ultimately tournament realms seem like a pretty good idea though like tournament realms are more where I would be kind of basing my stance um, and my preference at because then you could have a global release on tournament realms but you don't have to play tournament realms so for the rest of the world if you say you raid on that tuesday or that wednesday or whatever like you can just wake up and raid. you can wake up go to work come home and raid and there's no there's no disruption i think that's really really great so i don't see that being a problem and then it's like if you want to play tournament realms you can and you could easily have thousands of people on on specific tournament realms and i don't see a problem you can have multiple tournament realms it doesn't matter like just do that and I think it removes the BOE's issue. Yeah, people wouldn't be able to help with splits, but then I guess that makes it more interesting. Blizzard don't really like guilds doing splits anyway. That's why they got like rid of Master Loot and all that shit anyway, because they don't want people really doing splits. And they try and diminish that as much as they can, reduce the amount of loot that drops, etc., etc. Uh, and yeah, I just think Tournament Realms would be pretty good. Um, another suggestion is just getting Blizzard involved. Like, I think Blizzard just needs to be a referee. I think if you look at the AWC and you look at the MDI, even things like the KSM and the DMM, I know I'm hitting you with a lot of, a lot of shorthand here, but, um, a lot of these events, yeah, they're community ran, or some of them are community ran, some of them are Blizzard ran, uh, run, but, uh, they all have Blizzard support and Blizzard helps supply tournament realms and helps supply, you know, support in these things and helps, in a sense, govern them to some degree. And then the community, so the KSM, the guys behind that, they decide what the rules are. They decide what comps you can have and whatnot. Same with the DMM, right? And they work. Nobody complains. Nobody complains when somebody else wins. They go, oh, well, this is unfair because we weren't allowed to play two hunters. Like, nobody says that. They just go, yeah, you know, like, this was fun, or, oh, no, this wasn't as fun. But nobody says, oh, we should have won. We should have won because this is unfair. And I think Blizzard stepping in and being a referee is is a vital part of this race now because there's so there's so many issues that can happen in the scene and, and disruption of growth here. Like I think when you look at some so for example, Limit turned their stream off on I think the first day because they were just gonna they were gonna go to bed, but they were just gonna do one pull just to te just to test something. They killed Council off stream accidentally. Oops. Oops, accidentally killed one of the bosses in the raid on accident. By accident? On accident, by accident. And uh, Limit then, uh, and, and that was the whole thing. They then didn't release their kill video until after Echo had already killed it. So there was a little bit of, there was a little bit of finicky play there. I'll, gi I'll give them that. And then Echo come out, and then Echo say, yeah, we're on side in Atheris now. We're turning off our streams. You guys aren't going to see any of this. We'll release the VOD when we kill it, or whatever. Or we'll turn our stream off in a bit. Uh, turn our stream on in a bit. And they didn't. And they waited and waited before they came on uh, back on with their stream. And I think this kind of, like... I understand that it's a competition that teams want to win, but it's not okay when you have sponsors and viewers that are here take part in the action. If you're streaming the race, you stream in the race. That's it. And I don't think it's fair to, to you. I don't think it's fair to me. I don't think it's fair to the viewers. And the sponsors as well. And for a lot of people, they say, well, who cares about the sponsors? Why should I give a shit about the sponsors, right? I'm not getting paid by the sponsors. Who, who cares about the sponsors? Well, you should care. Everyone should care about what, like, you know, the fact that the sponsors will want these things to be streamed because the sponsors are what allowing this industry to grow and what's allowing way more teams to be able to take part this time teams like bdgg aversion uh lazarus uh pieces even like a lot of these teams now are able to take part because there's a financial backer and without it 
we just have this two horse race which i mean yes okay you could look at this tournament you could say oh well or this race you could say oh yeah well we still had a two horse race and fair enough right but the more that this progresses i mean this has been the first time around that a lot of these teams have streamed like this like the, the first time around that piece have done this properly and bdgg and stuff like that and i just think the more that we can support this industry and and have a growth of this industry but while uh raiding esports i think it's better and i think that you need a referee because it's it's clear that the community aren't sure where they stand and you have fanboys for limit and you have fanboys for echo and neither of them can see the side of the other one and i don't think it's healthy i don't think it's good for the scene and yeah i just think blizzard should step in and referee to some degree not set rules but provide tournament realms or something like that or or i don't know like but potentially talk with some of the guilds talk with some of these guilds and and kind of outline maybe maybe some ground rules or something um because i think it's getting way out of hand now with a lot of with a lot of people and uh, like i said it wasn't a fun experience having having like fanboys from different teams come in and and just try and rile up like pieces streams and stuff like that and i don't know i just think good for the scene if blizzard step in i would like to see some tournament realms i know they have their issues but i think ultimately that would be the best way to do this a global release i don't know that that would be the best because for the community for the wider community for people like you and myself i don't think that would be ultimately the best thing to do um but let me know what you guys think down in the comments if you guys think that you know if you guys have your own suggestions i'd love to hear them i'd love to talk more around this subject and I just want to see the race to world first grow because I mean like, hey, I just hosted for the first time. I'd love to do it again. I'd love to cast. I'd love to, um, you know, interact with different teams. Um, I'd love to, you know, hop around cast and, and, and take part with different different teams. But um, one thing actually that, that to think as well is OTK. I mean, OTK are coming into this race now and they're a new org and they have done a great job, I think, of involving a player or a viewer base that wouldn't otherwise have watched. And I think... Uh, OTK did a good job of getting people interested, but then also like distracting them and being like, okay, well, we're watching the race, but like also, hey, here's a badger. And like, oh, here's like a wrestling match. And just like they're doing their normal dorky stuff that a lot of their viewers are used to, but then also they are taking a serious look at the race. And I think that combination was good for their audience. I think it was good. And I think it has helped the scene grow. So thank you to OTK. And I'd love to see them support uh, support more teams in the future as well. And uh, I don't know how much help they've given. I don't know if they're giving financial backing or just vi like like by by displaying it on their stream or what how they've helped these teams. Um, but I know that there are a lot of teams that are grateful for OTK being around. So thank you to them. Maybe 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 somebody like OTK could be could be the the, the ref in a sense. Maybe they can outline some ground rules as a as a neutral party. Um, and yeah, so I think that's something to consider. But I definitely think there needs to be some kind of referee going on here. All great sports games have a referee. They're there for a reason. I think we should get one in. Uh, but thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. It's, it's good seeing you again. I'll be back to streaming. And yeah, check out some Feral and Windwalker action on my stream. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about this video and what you thought. And yeah, just the race was, was an awesome experience to be a part of. So thank you to, to those that allowed it to happen or made it happen. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in.